Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Tizubia. I'm the Vice President of Marketing with Webgility, and uh, I'm excited to announce on today's Tales from the E-Commerce Front, uh, we're really excited to be joined by Sean Buckley and Koshika Samrasinghe, uh, both of Shopify. Uh, Sean and Koshi are part of the retail partnership team over at the e-commerce powerhouse, uh, where they're dedicated to helping merchants unify their in-store and their online sales with tools that can set them up for the future of retail. Uh, welcome to both of you guys. Hello. Thank you for having us. Hi. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, Sean and Koshi, uh, you know, Webgility, we've really been shouting from the rooftops and, uh, and I don't think this is any surprise to anyone. The future of retail is omni-channel commerce. <laughs> and uh, I think before we really get into the meat of, uh, you know, what a, a solid omni-channel marketing presence looks like, let's, let's back it up a little bit and define exactly like what is the omni-channel uh, commerce? What does this mean? Uh, there's a lot of misinterpretation out there. So uh, would you mind sharing with, with the audience, you know, really what the definition of um, omnichannel commerce is? Yeah, um, I'll kick it off and then Koshi, you can run, add any insights there. Uh, so I, I guess what I'd like to say is um, what it isn't is just multi-channel commerce. So there's like a distinction that we like to make between multi-channel and omnichannel because um, some people might think that it means the same thing. Um, multi-channel means that you're selling on different sales channels. So you maybe have an e-commerce store, maybe you have a physical store, and maybe you list on places like eBay or Amazon. Um, but those channels aren't necessarily connected. They're not talking to one another. They're not sharing data and insights, um, both on the pre-purchase journey at the point of purchase and post-purchase. Whereas an omni-channel solution uh, connects your in-store shopping, your e-commerce marketplaces, uh, mobile web, uh, social uh, marketing campaigns that you might have, all of your channels are all connected. All of the data that's being gleaned from those channels is connected uh, and you're able to gain insights. The data speaks to you and you can make actions based on that um, to, to better run your business and like, improve commerce across the board for you and your merchants. Uh, and in that omni-channel solution, um, that means that not only is the, the data pooled, but it's, it's speaking to all of the channels in real time. Um, so there is no double entry. Uh, there is no reconciliation post-sale or at the end of the, the week when everything is reconciled in real time um, as it happens across all the channels. So. And to add on to that, I'd kind of like describe our view of Omnichannel as the customer being at the center of the retail experience. So what Sean described, you integrate each of those touch points that the customer uses to interface with your brand to offer them what they need, the moment they need it, anywhere, anywhere they are and on any device. So that whole experience is then powered by that unified commerce of uniting your backend data with your front end customer facing interfaces and having that really holistic view of your customer, how they interact with your brand and all the data that you need to make the right decisions for your customer's journey across all of those multiple channels and touch points. So it really sounds like the pulling kind of some key points out of there, like that unified experience, it's really about putting the customer at the heart of everything you're doing and making sure that they're having a shopping experience that is seamless uh, from one end to the other. And they don't know what's going on in the back end. Uh, they just, they want, they want to shop and they want to have that same brand relationship that they're having, whether it's online or in physical. Um, and it's really great to kind of hear that definition. Thanks for diving into that. And, and I think we can get a little bit deeper, right? So I know Shopify has done a lot of really great research around some omnichannel consumer trends and, and what they bring to the table uh, for an online retailer today. Uh, I think they're kind of the dream shoppers, right? Like we'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, what, what does that omnichannel consumer look like? Yeah, so um, an omnichannel consumer will interact with your brand or your, your storefront um, well before they actually make the purchase decision. So they're, they're doing a lot of active research and they might do that research um, across all of the channels that you're providing them, the, the services with which you reach them. So a good example would be, they might see something in their social media feed that's tailored towards their types of, of viewing habits and it might present your product 
From there, they might go to your website, do some more research. They might go try something on in store and then go back home and check out via social media because they're reminded of that. Um, they see your, your uh, ad again and you can purchase right through the ad. Or maybe they come back home and they purchase um, through, the, through your e-commerce store. Or maybe they purchase through your e-commerce store and then they go and pick it up. So they go buy online, pick up in store. But basically that journey was not the traditional walking to the storefront, seeing something on sale in the front window, walking in and buying it. It happened across all of these surfaces. Um, and so that's kind of what a modern day consumer um, journey is look, looks like and what they're, they're doing. Um, and because of that, because there's multiple services involved, the omni-channel consumer tends to be uh, uh, um, more viable for like repeat purchases because you can message them, you can hit them in these different surfaces um, even when they're not at your store or only at your website um, and you can drive repeat conversions and drive uh, repeat interest. And that means that the customer is more valuable to you um, versus somebody that just shops once um, at your store. Those are great insights. Yeah, yeah Koshi. To, to, so to layer onto that, um, to Sean's point, I think that the brands that make it really easy and fun for customers to shop with them across those channels and really help their customers feel seen and valued end up having the most loyal customers. So turning a customer into a repeat customer keeping that keeps coming back means that you have this customer that's now a brand ambassador. They could be promoting your brand on social media. They're willing to spend more. They'll try new products. They'll re leave reviews, which is amazing, right? And most importantly, they'll keep coming and coming back and buying from you. So to your point, they really are the holy grail of shoppers, but it takes time and effort and actually that unified view of your data to find who those customers are and then target and retain them. Yeah. I think and that's an excellent like, point. Sorry, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Just to like add to that, because it, it something else jumped out at me as, as Kosha was <laughs> adding that that info is um, she mentioned reviews and and like posting about um, the product or that experience on social media. And that's like an awesome part of the post purchase um, omni channel customer experience where now you don't necessarily have to invest in advertising um, to people that normally you would have because the customer is an advocate for you. That omni-channel customer becomes an advocate for your business um, and they're doing it for you. And there's nothing more powerful than a, a user review um, or a trusted referral from a friend to try something out, a product or service. And so when you can get that omni-channel customer to that point, to leave that positive review, it, it, it becomes a very, very powerful tool for others that are researching pre-purchase to, to get them to convert. Yeah, mm, honestly, we have some merchants that are doing that so well. There's one called like Pura Vida bracelets that uses Facebook ads and they use um, influencer content as their ads. And their engagement is like through the roof because they're using their own customers as brand ambassadors. It's very, very cool. It's fantastic. Great tip too. I hope, I hope you guys listening are writing that one down. That's one you can steal. <laughs> um, no, and I, I think there's a lot to be said there. It's it's really you know learning the customer behavior, learning their trends. It's having that relationship and seeing like where they're, you know now where they are purchasing, what their purchasing trend looks like. Like where do they want to shop? Where do they want to explore? And it tells you really to create you know what experience. And I think there's a, a just a, a different mindset of that consumer. And I'm glad that we got a chance to kind of dig into like what does this mean today? And and I think you know in the future there's there's so much that we can really go towards as far as like creating omni-channel experiences for for shoppers across the board um i'd love to dive in a little deeper on i, I think the big question we want to ask today right is like how do some of our online retailers get more of these shoppers these omni-channel consumers as customers like are there any secrets that successful omni-channel marketers have up their sleeves i know we kind of shared one here with your example koshi but um, are there any others that can really help some of our, our retailers get more of these kinds of customers? Yeah. Um, Koshi, do you want to uh, dive in on that one or do you want me to, to kick it off? I'm actually going to let you kick it off because I actually yeah. have a great story about the entire flow that I'm going to share a little bit later. So I'm going to let you do That's this perfect. one. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, yeah. So 
Um, I, and I, I talked about this a bit on the, the webinar that we did, but the, there's kind of three secrets to helping understand who these customers are and like how merchants can, can, um, can target them and curate that audience. Uh, and so one is understanding the journeys that these customers take. And this is where having an omni-channel solution versus just a multi-channel setup um, is, is a really key because you can understand where did that customer start? What were the, the um, different surfaces that they went to and engaged with your, your solution? Um, so did they click on an ad? Did they give you an email at a certain point in time? Did they go to your website and add something to a cart? Did they go to store and try it on? What was that customer journey? Um, so number one is just understanding that journey and, uh, or let's call them conversion paths. So what was the pathway to conversion? Um, and then number two is understanding what conversion paths are the most profitable for your business. So once you understand um, what the paths are, look at the paths and say, okay, well, it really, the, the pathway that starts with Facebook is generating a lot of sales um, on my e-commerce checkout. Uh, so you need to understand, you need to rank your pathways and see which ones are the most valuable. Um, and then you wanna see what types of customers are following those pathways so that you can get an understand, uh, understanding of who your customer base is. And after doing that, um, you can start to see, okay, these are my customers that are following my most valuable path. Now I'm going to think of tactics to apply to market to that customer base. So what types of tactics might work to that specific customer? Because I want to curate more of my most valuable pathways. Um, and the tactics might be um, giving them information about the value proposition at a certain point in the pathway, um, giving them uh, motivation. So maybe you give them a discount when they um, uh, they give you their email or something along those lines so that you can market and track them um, uh, to them and track them better. Um, and it could be something like a cross-sell opportunity. So there might be something that bundles in with what they keep looking at that actually helps them make that purchase decision because as a bundle, it's a more compelling product offering um, or even gamification tactics. So uh, there's one merchant, and I'm, I apologize, it's escaping my mind, but uh, they have a, a interactive spin wheel of discounts that comes up at a certain part of the pathway. And that spin wheel has like increased their conversions um, at the point of purchase by like 30%. So people that actually engage with the gamification, just having that happen at a certain aspect of the, the customer journey um, has increased uh, the actual conversion. And you can experiment, especially on the, the um, digital front in the online solution um, with different pathways and where you would add different types of tactics uh, like uh, discounting or uh, bundling or increasing value proposition pretty easily and pretty readily. And you can do A-B tests to see what works and what doesn't. Um, it, this is the power of Omnichannel that like allows a merchant to do these things uh, readily with their, their tools. And I think it's super powerful for smaller merchants too, because for example, if you have a ton of data on your customers, you can tailor your messaging and your offers and your rewards. So they're super meaningful. And I think that's even, it's important to big, big box retailers. Nordstrom does a great job of that, but it's also really important when you're a small brand and you're building your customer base to do things in a really meaningful and relevant way to find your niche customer and really make them loyal and a repeat customer. All of the talk, tactics Sean was talking about, that's kind of where you need to focus your energy, I think. Yeah, that's some great insights there. And I, I kind of picked up on this a little bit too. Like there's always that buying intense analysis that you can do. Like a good example of this is if you sell standing desks, what's the, you know, the bundle opportunity there? Do they need to have a monitor attachment? Do they need to have the standing pad? Like what else becomes a, a value that you can add onto that? And you know, offering a discount on a bundle there, that's gonna increase your order volume at that first touch. But it also, knowing that information lets you, again, advertise past that point. If they've bought a desk, it's, it's a, the give a mouse a cookie thing, right? Where if you've got this, you know you need that. Um, and, and the nice part about that is they could have bought that item in store uh, physically. And then now online, they're uh, seeing an experience of what the next uh, complimentary products are for them to procure. So. 
love that. It's 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 kind of a, a great angle to take. And I think, you know, both WebGility and Shopify, like we're, we're really kind of on that front lines of trying to help and like omni-channel commerceers really scale what I call the three Ps, right? That, that productivity, predictability and profitability. You guys have kind of touched on those with some of those tips. Um, couple more omni-channel marketing tips you guys want to let go for our viewers at home? Uh, yeah, like, I guess there's a, a couple like actual tactics that, that we could touch on. There's uh, abandoned carts that um, that you can track. So um, if somebody were to add something to the cart, go through the process of giving you their shipping information and their email and whatnot, and then they abandon, well, send them retargeting or reminders about that. What's really cool in the omni-channel solutions now is you can send them reminders on in the form of an Instagram ad or a Facebook ad that has that specific product in it. So you can get really targeted in how you do that. Um, or if that customer comes into the store, uh, if your point of sale is integrated into your, your omni-channel platform, the associate in store can see the abandoned cart right on the point of sale. And then they can understand if uh, they should be reminding the customer of that, that product or, um, and you can get a really like, uh, like tailored in-person shopping experience as well. That's a great and then example. you can do other tactics even, oh, sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. It's just, it's I was example. going, uh, I was just going to say like a post sale as well is a great touch point because a lot of um, brands will offer like a discount or a further incentive to bring the customer back to shop more. And that can be a great point to suggest really tailored products to your customers so that they kind of see what the other options are. And that may lead to another sale. Yeah, I know. These are some great tips. Um, steal these. <laughs> these are fantastic, you guys. Um, I actually have one that, that I'll definitely share. I think a core component, we talk about omni-channel being you know, that customer experience is at the heart of everything you're doing. Well, if you're doing something digitally and you're doing something in store, having the data tell you the entire story is extremely important. And so I always tell people like, avoid data loss at all costs. Um, you really got to it, get that into an aggregated format, figure out what people are, are shopping for, where they're shopping, what's per, driving a purchasing decision, what's driving a research decision, and really looking at, across the line again into those three Ps. This is really how you're going to dive in and look at profitability as well. Uh, you know, from that, that perspective, is, is that channel more profitable than another? Can you do something different to change that purchasing habit? Um, so there's a lot you can really gain if you have got an aggregated data approach. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges in Omnichannel today is, uh, you know, you've got a lot of different data in a lot of different places. Bringing that really together is, is pretty important. And I know uh, that the, the retail team at Shopify has spent a lot of time looking at that. Uh, any other advice to kind of add to people and, you know, how do you get that data clear? Uh, what do you do if you're living in that chaos? Like get out of the spreadsheet, right? What would you guys advise? So I have a great story about one of our brick and mortar merchants. Um, they're called Lively and they're a retailer in New York. And for the first time they launched a personalized shopping experience with Shopify. So customers could book this fit, they call it a fit sesh online for one of their stores. Um, but what became really meaningful is they unified data across online and all of their point of sale locations. And that gave them the insight that 30% of their revenue came from people who booked these fit sessions online and that the average order size from those customers was much, a, I think the scale was 60 to 80% higher than what they were seeing from walk-in customers. So to me, that's such a great example of what you were talking about of the value of unifying your data because it gives you this complete picture of your business and helps you understand what works and what doesn't and then where to invest right yeah that's awesome like that's that's an excellent excellent example of even if they were doing that but the data wasn't serving the insights you wouldn't understand that that is a good place to invest so if you had data loss between the online and the um in store say you had an external booking system and you were running it manually and and having those bookings you wouldn't know that there was a 30% lift there and the 80% uh, gain on the other side. Um, and there's like an unknown opportunity cost all of a sudden because of the, the data not talking to one another. And you might lose that data, um, which uh, like 
impacts the customer experience too. And we like we started the conversation saying like omnichannel is customer centric, and this is where uh, it provides a lot of value and opportunity. Um, and data loss can not only negatively impact your ability to to see like potential revenue insights, but it could negatively impact the customer experience. Imagine trying to return something in store that you bought online. Your policy is that you're allowed to do that. So you, as a merchant, you say, yeah, we'll gladly allow you to return in store purchases made online, but that order wasn't synced between the systems and the, there's data loss there. And now there's an objection coming from the part-time associate in the store who's just following the rules uh, and there's a poor customer experience. So it's, it's um, uh, preventing that at all costs is, is essential. And that's another value there to your omni-channel solution. Yeah, that's exactly point. that. I'm actually exactly that happened to Neiman Marcus on Black Friday a few years ago, where they launched um, buy online return and store at their last call stores. And because they hadn't in, like interfaced their data, they literally had to call up at, to process every single return while the line just built up outside the store. Oh, wow. It was uh, really bad. People had like social media posts about it. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a learning experience. And I think what, what it really shows is that a big brand makes some of those same mistakes as well. So if you're you know a smaller retailer right now and you're growing your omni-channel business, like it's good to know you're not alone in this. Like even the big guys struggle with some of these experiences. Um, you know, it's it's some great key points there. I I think, you know, kind of from the the roundup here, I have just one more fun, really fun question for you guys. Um, we've mentioned a few key examples, but um, I'd love to know, you know, an omni-channel retailer that you think just has an amazing customer experience and, and how they've leveraged some innovative marketing tactics to, to make it happen. And, and I'll jump in first with mine. Um, I'm a huge Sephora fangirl, uh, mostly because the, you can go in line or go in, in their stores and try on anything, right? They're really known for, you can sample any of the products, but how do you create that experience online? they actually created a virtual app now that you can select certain products and try it on through, uh, through AI technology. So it's, it'll put the makeup right on your face, which is kind of neat. Uh, so it's creating that try on and experience it at home, uh, which is a great experience to, to have that, uh, you know, that trial both in store and online. Uh, what are a couple examples that you guys have, brands that you just think are doing a great job with Omnichannel? I can talk about another beauty retailer. Um, I actually love Sephora. So I was a big fan of Sephora as well until I got won over by Credo. So Credo Beauty is one of, it's a Shopify brand, which I found out very recently. Um, and I should add, I'm like their perfect niche customer because I want like these clean cruelty-free products, which I was buying from Shopify, uh, sorry, from Sephora. Um, but what really was interesting to me about Credo is they took me through this entire um, omni-channel journey of touch points, which was almost everything that Sean described a little bit earlier. So first they sent me a card in my mailbox when they were launching their retail location in my neighborhood. And it must have been a good card because I read it. I didn't put it in the bin. They then targeted me with more direct mail flyers. So I went and checked them out online because they gave me a coupon. I ended up making a purchase and they emailed, they mailed me coupons in my box with my item, which incentivized me to buy more. They are actually the retailer with the spin wheel that Sean mentioned. Um, so I used the spin wheel <laughs> and um, they retargeted me on Facebook that worked also. So their content was obviously really um, very relevant. And the best part is now it's so good because it, all of these touch points just work. I signed up for rewards. I'm on their mailing list and I've never been into a store. And then my last retail experience with them, I used one of our app partners because they've launched this very cool virtual shopping experience where you can talk to a retail associate online at any time, ask any questions about the product. You can actually do video calls with a store associate to see what products like, what they, what they feel like. Um, and that's all done through an app partner we have on Shopify called Hero. So it was kind of fun to see that end-to-end -end journey 
also powered by Shopify. Um, and all of that data that they used in a very meaningful way to deliver that super meaningful customer experience. That's amazing. You may have sold me. I'm going to have to check them out for sure. It sounds like a an awesome detailed, like, just knowing that customer, I think is the biggest part. And that's a great example. Like they had to really understand who their ideal customer profile was and they tailored that experience to the way that you like to shop. That's why it was so successful. Great example. And I'm glad we got back to the end of the spin wheel. We know who it was now. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so Sean, uh, what's, what's an example that you have? So mine's more of one that I, I've pulled from our, our textbook of uh, case studies on, uh, from Shopify, but um, Betsy Johnson, so the, the New York fashion designer, um, the brand has curated an excellent omni-channel experience as well. Uh, so they have a really big digital following on Facebook and Instagram. There's over a million fans or followers um, across those social channels. And uh, they use like really uh, high quality photography and brand photography and lifestyle photography to showcase the products. Um, and they allow uh, potential customers to interact with that. So they can, they can create that journey, um, the customer journey through those social channels and they can click to learn more or um, go to the website uh, or the online store. And um, right away when they start um, and if they come from Facebook, they go to the online store, the online store knows it's attributing it from that specific Facebook post, um, that journey, and it'll create a micro tailored message that is um, saying, oh, here's your, your Facebook uh, sourced incentive or something along those lines um, to grab the email and capture that information from the customer. Um, now they're opted into email marketing and you can now market the customer without having to do paid advertising or cost per click. Um, and then from there, uh, they, they get the ability to um, like purchase through all those channels uh, wherever they're, they're going back and forth from like the, the Betsy Johnson omni-channel solution. So um, they'll get marketing messages that, that push them back towards Facebook and they can check out from Facebook or they can uh, do so online or they can drive traffic to like the stores that carry the brand. Um, so for example, they can, they can say, okay, well, we're listed in Macy's in your area or we're, we're available at Macy's in your area. Um, the customer can go and then they can compare the, the order data from Macy's um, with the information on their, uh, their omni-channel um, like customer journey touch points. So um, they drive engagement across all the channels. Uh, it increases conversion. Um, and uh, they also really promote that user generated content. So um, users actually mirroring the lifestyle imagery that they have on their sites. Um, users will do that themselves. They'll tag the brand in it and then the brand will use that to um, help influence other people that are interested in the product as well. That's an extremely powerful example. And I think it, it really is an example of a brand that again, knows their ideal customer profile, like they're, they're speaking to them, they have a relationship with them and they're, they're actually promoting them. They're letting their voice be heard through that omni-channel marketing experience, which is um, kind of that, I think, holy grail of, of really reaching the peak of omni-channel. Those are great examples, you guys. And um, unfortunately, we're like right at the end of our time for today. I wish I could talk to you guys some more about this. Maybe we'll have to do another episode together. Um, but again, it's, it's always an absolute pleasure talking e-commerce shop with both of you. Uh, for our folks listening, I uh, hope you guys stay tuned. We have more episodes of Tales from the E-Commerce Front coming uh, where we gather our latest tips, tricks, and those what ifs uh, for online retail success. Thanks for listening. <laughs>